Welcome to Madeline's Life Management. Happy Tuesday. Today we're going to be talking about sleep hygiene and weight loss. I want to talk about weight loss and sleeping, obviously. While you sleep, did you know you burn fat? Of course there are ways to increase the amount of fat you burn, like lifting weights. You know, the more muscle you have, the more fat you'll burn in your sleep. When you break down um, your muscles at night, it's going to work to repair those and it's going to use, you know, whatever um, glycerin you have in your stomach as well as, of course, proteins that are being recycled and fat to rebuild those. When you're getting six hours or less of non-REM sleep, your stress hormones go up and more cortisol is released. Now, cortisol is a hormone responsible for storing fat. Get in more than six hours. Another way you can burn more fat while you sleep is by sleeping in colder temperatures. Turn down the temp to about 67 degrees for optimal benefits. As y'all know, when we are tired, our neurons are firing more slowly. And so, of course, when your neurons are firing more slowly, they're also firing more slowly in your prefrontal cortex, which is your inhibitory response. So when that happens, your self-control goes down. So instead, you know, if you're reaching for a brownie, normally your prefrontal cortex, especially if you are like, oh, I don't eat that food, it, it won't fire that soon enough. And instead you're just like, oh, I need it, I need it, I need it. And also you're like, oh, I need this for energy. And so you'll grab it up and you'll eat it and you also aren't gonna have the self-discipline to go exercise, even if you know it's good for you. Like a lot of, like I know when I wake up early in the morning, I am so productive, I'm a morning person, I enjoy it, I have my coffee, I, you know, I have all this extra time, I also have more self-discipline because my neurons are just awake and revving to go. And I also know if I sleep in late, I'm gonna wake up late and, I'm gonna be like, oh, I skipped breakfast, I wanna have a huge lunch, and I'm gonna have it with pizza and cookies and ice cream. You know that waking up is good for you, but it's so delicious in the moment just to sleep in and your bed's warm and outside's cold, and you're having a good dream and you just wanna go back to bed. So that's kinda of how it works with eating healthy. You, you know you should eat healthy. I don't think anyone's like, brownies are good for you. That's another thing, food addiction, <laughs> You can't reason it away. You can't reason, you know, in the moment you're going, I get a kick out of people that say, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. And I was sitting there and I was like, uh, donuts taste better than skinny feels. Um, chips feel better than skinny feels. Like I have so many things. But then I was sitting there and I, I was talking to my mom and I said, you know, when you're skinny, and you have that, you know, ice cream cake in front of you, that's the best feeling. I was like, whoever wrote that quote didn't understand, you know, nothing tastes better than skinny feels. Nothing tastes better than being skinny and still eating that food, you know, but then you're gonna gain the weight back. But I know that when I struggle the most is when I meet my goal weights, <laughs> my goal weights, my goal weight, and then I'm like, oh, I can eat whatever I want. And, or I don't even think that I'm like, I'm gonna stick to this, I'm going to maintain. But then I'm like, oh, well, it looks so cute eating this ice cream cake. Now that you know sleeping is great for weight loss, you're like, okay, how do I get this sleep hygiene? Here are some tips and tricks to perfect a great sleep hygiene routine. First off, wake up at the same time every single day. Um, if you wake up at six o'clock, every weekday on the weekends also wake up at six o'clock it'll make monday so much more enjoyable and i know it feels like kind of a cheat when you're sleeping in saturday but instead maybe take a little nap you know and uh that's another thing if you're starting on your sleep schedule when you set that alarm for six o'clock that first morning just jump out of bed don't hit the snooze i know for myself if i hit the snooze I won't get up until three hours later. But if I jump out of bed, if I, I put my phone, this is another tip, put your phone all the way across the room. My phone has my alarm. My alarm goes off, I have to get all the way out of bed. I have to go over, I have to walk over, unplug it. Well, I'm already by my bathroom, so I might as well go to the bathroom. 
Oh, I might as well brush my teeth. Oh, I kind of want coffee. So see how you kind of trick yourself into getting up? Another thing that I've started doing is making my bed first thing in the morning after I've had my coffee. Not first thing in the morning, but after I've had my coffee. And then it's just beautiful and I don't feel like getting back into it. Shut off electronics one or two hours before you go to bed. And that way you don't get that light in your face that lowers melatonin. And melatonin is a naturally released hormone in your brain that kind of um, tells yourself to go to sleep. And it is um, produced in really dark environments and at certain times. And if you have that light, your melatonin production is going to be less than it would have been if you didn't have the light. So I personally love reading a book because it, um, I enjoy it and it also puts me to sleep. And I still feel a little productive if I can't sleep for a while. So I'll get a good book and I have, I always, <laughs> on my bedstand I have like my Bible and then like um, a book that I'm going to learn something from. Like right now I'm reading Sacred Marriage and I love it. As surprising as this may sound, this is the hardest one for me to do. And that is no coffee at least six hours before bed. And I should say no caffeine. I'm like holding my coffee protectively while, <laughs> while saying this. <laughs> I love you. I'm gonna take a sip. Oh, so good. Um, so anyway, don't have caffeine at least six hours before bed. Even if you drink coffee all the time like me, it still has effects. And even decaf coffee still has a little bit of caffeine. And along with the not having coffee at least six hours before sleep, don't work out at least three hours before sleep. Exercising is so good for your sleep health and you just go to bed more rested. Your body um, can, if you do weights, your body can, I don't know why I'm touching my arms like I work out my arms. Um, <laughs> But uh, oh, oh. working out in the morning is a great way to just get energy, get revved up, get those endorphins, um, and get excited about your day. And then working out even like four hours before bed or, you know, something like that is also really good for you. But once you get three hours before bed, then you have all of those hormones, all of um, the endorphins. Uh, raging through your body and you feel so good and it's great, but then you might have a hard time getting to bed. Another wonderful thing that you can do is having a calming routine before bed. My routine is I will have, um, I'll read before bed and that's kind of a constant, but a lot of the times, a lot of the time I'll take a shower and then I'll get a, a cup of tea and then I'll read. So I kind of have this routine and, and after my shower, I'll put on my like face creams and I'll put some leave-in conditioner on my hair and kind of, you know, scrunch it. And so you, you get into, you're in routines, you're in habits. Humans, we have routines, we have habits. And so make them conducive to a wonderful night of sleep. Another tip is for all of you who live in the dorms and are in college or have noisy neighbors or who sleep with someone who snores, get earplugs. They are magic. Even if you know, you kind of want to sleep in, get earplugs. It's great. You just put them in and then you're, you know, off to a great night of sleep. Or what my sister does, who is also my roommate, is she gets a fan. So um, she, I think she has three fans right now. She turns on her bathroom fan and then she has this like little fan and then she has like a big fan. Anyway, get a fan, you know, have some white noise, get a noise machine or get earplugs. Um, so there are solutions to noisy neighbors that don't involve, you know, getting a broom and, you know, banging the ceiling. Um, not that I've ever done that before. Maybe I've thought about it. <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about is that your bed is for sleeping. And so don't study in your bed. Don't, um, you, of course, if you're going to read in your bed before bed, that's different. But um, really make your bed for sleep. Don't eat in your bed ever. Don't watch TV in your bed. Things like that. Don't even have your phone with you while you're in your bed. You know, get out of your bed. Look at it at the table or at your desk or on your couch or on a comfy chair. But really make your bed a place for sleep. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.